All right, welcome back to the Jazz Piano School podcast, episode number 214. My name is Brendan Lowe, creator and founder of Jazz Piano School. Now, I hope you guys like listening to lawn gardening because that's going outside my place right now. But the show must go on. So in this particular episode, one of our amazing educators named Trent Bryden is gonna be teaching you about setting restraints in order to increase creativity. Now on the piano, we have so many notes. We have so many different things we can actually do. We can play in the high register, the low register. We can play one hand, two hand, multiple notes at a time, right? A lot of other instruments don't have that much facility at their disposal. So sometimes to boost creativity, break out of the box, we need to actually set restraints for ourselves, okay, in order for us to think outside the box. And that's exactly what Trent is going to teach you in this particular episode. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm going to use this every single day from here on out because it's actually that good. So that being said, let's dive right in. Here we go. What's up, guys? This is Trent with Jazz Piano School. And today we're going to be talking about setting restraints in your practice to um, create more creative opportunities in your improvisations. So I actually was a wrestler um, all growing up and through high school and I've learned a lot about jazz piano through my athletic experience, um, specifically in this category. Um, so in wrestling, um, what we would do in practice, before we would go just free-for-all live, um, just going against one another, we would set up situations where the coach would say, okay, one guy, you're only allowed to do this. You're only allowed to do throws, or you're, you're only allowed to do leg attacks, and the other guy is only allowed to do this. Go. And we would go through all these different situations um, to develop our skill in those situations that if we were just left to our own, um, in our own practice, we probably wouldn't get in a lot of those positions. But he put us there, our coach put us there on purpose, so we would be forced to wrestle through and work out those positions um, in our practice time um, in live situations. In jazz piano, we can do the exact same thing by setting restraints for ourselves that force us to practice um, playing passages and lines and harmonies that we might not necessarily play if we were left to our own devices, yet we can find ourselves in um, when we're in a real life playing situation. And it, it can help you to break some, some muscle memory and some, some of these patterns that we're used to playing over and over again and get um, some more creativity into our lines. So the three things we're going to talk about today are um, setting um, restraints in terms of areas on the keyboard that you're allowed to play within. Um, so, for example, we're going to be looking at an octave. Um, we're also going to be looking at interval restraint, saying you're only allowed to play certain intervals. And then finally, we're going to look at substituting individual notes um, for other notes in our lines. So first, let's look at the, the range limitation, the range of an octave. Um, so we're going to practice improvising only within one octave. So in this case, I'm playing over There Will Never Be Another You in the key of E flat. And for the first octave, I'm going to set um, between this E flat and this E flat. I'm only allowed to play in between here. Here's what that might sound like. So that was just within one octave, and there's a bunch of times in there where I just wanted to go. I wanted to go down to this note. I wanted to go, but I couldn't because I set that restraint. So I was forced to play within this octave. Now that might lead you to make some quote-unquote mistakes, or where you don't necessarily love the sound of it. Um, 
and that'll happen at first. But if you really stick with that restraint of that octave, you'll, you'll start finding things that sound really good to substitute for what you would usually do going outside of that range. Um, just for example, let's let's move this octave uh, to between these two A flats right here. So I'm only allowed to play between these two A flats for the entire course. Um, that that's going to be a lot different than what I just did because I only now have one tonic E flat to choose from um, and it's just going to be a totally different feeling so here we go so was kind of challenging for me um, I, I uh, found myself in some places that I didn't necessarily feel comfortable um, but I did a few things there that I've I've never really done before um, that I really liked that, that I can go back to but this isn't gonna be a one-time thing this is gonna be a you set these restraints and and you play in them for like you know 30 minutes to 45 minutes just in that octave and really explore all the possibilities it's helpful to do it slower too um, so you can really um, feel it out. It's also helpful to do it fast so you can see where you uh, aren't necessarily fluent. Um, let me do that one a little slower so I can kind of come up with some ideas consciously instead of just right on the spot. So... That was a little slower. Still, there were some things that I played that I wasn't c quite crazy about, but I was uh, also playing a lot of things that I've never played before. Um, and that really can only be done by either trying really hard or by setting these restraints for yourself where you don't give yourself any choice but to play these things that you, you're you not necessarily familiar with. Um, I would suggest you pick a couple octaves... Um, that are kind of far apart like I just did. These are a fourth apart. Maybe also do like B. That would be nice if you set uh, the B octaves um, as a limitation. But I mean it depends on what key you're in, what the song is, and what, what the changes are. So uh, just pick a couple different restraints. It doesn't have to be an octave. That's just a good, a good place to start. Um, it's a good clear... Uh, restraint so you're not going to really confuse yourself um, but you can widen that out you can do like a major tenth you can do an octave and a half whatever you want um, okay so that's setting restraints in terms of an area on the keyboard that you can play in now we're going to do intervals so the way I like to do this is starting off by only playing in steps that can be half steps or whole steps 
and then adding the intervals in one at a time. Because we want our lines to be mostly stepwise, mostly linear, and then um, the larger the leaps are, th those tend to be the less frequent in our solos. So that's why we're going to build up from steps all the way up to octaves. So first here, I'm going to play only using half steps and whole steps. Did a third there. Whoops. gets kind of hard you want to do uh like i just keep wanting to go but i can't because this is the third and i've said only half steps and whole steps so that that'll uh take some time to feel out to get those um any type of third or fourth or anything else that's in your muscle memory and only play in steps and then the next level is to add those thirds in so now i'm going to play with half steps whole steps and thirds that could be major or minor so jumped too far. into the next course um, and then you would keep going so on and so forth you add next you add him fourths and then fifths and then sixths and then sevenths and then octaves um, adding in one interval at a time and really consciously limiting yourself to those intervals and when you don't play that catch yourself and 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 realize okay that was autopilot that was not what I was trying to do and come up with a different choice instead of uh like, if you're trying to only play thirds and you accidentally play a fourth, consciously decide, okay, this is where I played the fourth instead of the third, and here's how I could do it within the limitation that I've set for myself. Um, that um, is a really great exercise that I think you're really going to get a lot out of. All right, so we've talked about limiting the area um, that you're allowed to play in. We've talked about limiting the interval you're allowed to play in. And now, here's one that... Um, I'm calling substitution, but it's not substitution like you're used to. Normally when we talk of substitution in terms of jazz piano, we're talking about chord substitutions, such as a tritone substitution. You can play, in, in a, if we're, again, in E flat, instead of playing F minor, B flat 7, E flat major 7, we can play F minor and then E7, because E is a tritone away from B flat. Here's what we're going to do differently. Instead of substituting an entire chord, we're just going to substitute one note. So anytime we go to play one note, we're going to substitute a specific note instead. And it's going to change the shape of our lines. So for this example, I'm going to do a tritone substitution, but just with one note. So anytime that I'm about to play an F, just out of muscle memory or just for whatever reason, I'm going to play a B instead. And I'm going to let that shape my lines in a new way that 
wouldn't happen otherwise. So I'm going to do it kind of slowly at first. Here we go. Mess it up there. Right there, I wanted to go, but I'm going. Now, a lot of, once you start doing that, um, you're going to be able to decide, okay, do I want to play the substituted note? Do I want to play the B instead of the F? Or do I just want to play something, uh, n nothing at all? Or do I want to play uh, another note? Because you'll start to get a sense of when that B is going to sound good and when it's not. And then you're, that's huge progress because you're sorting out all these sounds in real time and going through your options and your decisions. And it's just, it's just great to do. I'm going to talk through it this time because if I'm just playing, you don't know whether I was going to play that or whether I'm substituting it. So I'm going to talk through it this time. So I, I want to go, but instead I'm going to go. It's a really nice outside sound like that has really no, like I'm not playing a outside chord there. I'm just substituting the note. Cool stuff. Here I want to go, but I'm going to go. to go but instead I'm gonna go and then I want to go but I'm gonna go and then the natural re resolution would be so you can kind of see that process of um, you just any time you're gonna go hit that note you substitute the other note to try to tone away and if you know it's not gonna sound good then you're really using your ear and you can uh, start figuring out what you would like to substitute instead. Um, okay, so those are the three techniques that I want you to work with. Um, and the goal is to kind of break up your muscle memory and get you used to these situations that you, you wouldn't try to put yourself in. But when you're actually in them, you realize there's a lot of cool possibilities there. Um, so to summarize, set the restraint of... Um, the area of the keyboard that you can play on, set the restraint of what intervals you're going to play with, and then pick notes to substitute for other notes to change the shape of your lines. And this is stuff we do in practice, not necessarily when actually playing. Um, this is stuff when you really are wanting to think about what you're doing. But if you do this enough, this stuff will start to come out when you're not thinking and when you're just purely improvising. And that's always our goal when practicing this, um, these improv techniques is to really think about it in our practice time so that when we're just playing, we don't have to think about it. All right. Have fun. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that podcast episode. Go ahead and subscribe down below because we release a new podcast lesson like the one you just saw every single Wednesday and a new look of the week every single Monday. And go to jazzpianoschool.com to check out all of our free education. And if you're interested in taking that next step and getting access to our 600 plus video main course success path curriculum, which is completely all sequential, all step-by-step, -step, then you can check that out on our website as well because we are now open. All right, I hope you have a fantastic day and as always, happy practicing.